Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting, and today we're talking all about how to use a DMX moving light in X-Lights. So today, we're in the middle, if you're here live um, as this comes out, of our pre-sale for the Dominar Beam, which is the premier beam light for the Christmas light industry. It's completely waterproof, um, deals well with snow, etc. And um, we're it, it's one of those things where, just as a quick aside, um, I didn't intend to become a vendor in this world. I really didn't. But I just saw that this light behind me, this moving head beam, you can see it in the background, I just saw the need for it, that I knew out because of my experience in the stage lighting industry um, that there were better options for beams than what we had in the Christmas light industry dealing with those bulky domes domes and, and other fixtures that have really, really cheap pieces that go bad. Um, I just... I needed. I, I saw the need for something different, and so that's why I brought the Dominar Beam in with the factory um, and a manufacturer that I already have a relationship with. Now, that's not the topic of today's video, though it will feature the Dominar Beam, so you can see how it works, at least here inside my office. But the, the feature of today's video is to talk all about DMX moving heads in X-Lights. So, to give you a little background, X-Lights is not a DMX moving head program, right? Uh, there are many programs out there, uh, being that I come from the stage lighting world, many pieces of software and consoles that I've used over the years that control DMX moving lights. And those professional level and any, even intermediate level consoles are designed from the ground up to work with these types of lights. And therefore, they're a little more fluid than X-Lights is. But they can't. They generally don't do the timeline-based stuff, and it's a whole different program to learn. Um, X lights can do DMX moving heads. It's just not what it natively does, and so the process to get started and, and to use them can be a little bit confusing at first if you're new to DMX moving heads. Now, I will say as I get started here, we're going to cover the basics in today's video. I'm going to be using the Dominar Beam behind me uh, as an example. If you want more info, check out the video here on the Dominar Beam. And um, I'll be using it as an example today um, because it's the light that I use. But if you're looking for more in-depth and uh, guides to using moving heads in X lights, we, we have them inside of Learn Christmas Lighting Academy. Check out the link below for that. And also for everyone who buys the Dominar Beam, uh, either during our pre-sale or afterwards when it's regular price, uh, you'll get a complete guide to using this specific light in X lights, as well as uh, a pre-built model, all that good stuff. So off that soapbox. Um, so moving heads in X lights. There's a couple things you got to do to get started with a moving head in X lights. The first is you need a controller with a DMX output. These days, uh, pretty much most of the controllers you buy, the, the Culps or the Falcons, they have a DMX output. My assumption is that those DMX outputs were originally there to work with Lightorama systems uh, that use DMX, but they wire it backwards um, and, and to be compatible with that. And that is one use for them. Um, we have a full course actually in the Academy about coming from Lightorama, but that's not the point here. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> And so there's that option, but then usually you can set the ports to be wired the opposite way uh, for normal DMX operation. So I'm connected here today to a Falcon F48. It's literally right here behind me. Um, you can't see it. And I'm using the DMX output with an inexpensive uh, DMX to RJ45 Ethernet adapter. It's not technically Ethernet. It's an RJ45 Um connector uh that's just one you can get off of amazon they're very they're just a couple bucks each and then it connects via dmx cable boom to the dominar beam uh you can connect multiple beams together etc but that is the basic there so i've got my f48 i basically plugged it in, discovered it uh so i have it in x lights i've got my dmx output on in the layout tab i've got some things going on here so the first thing is that I have my custom model, my moving heads. Okay, these are the Dominar Beam moving heads. I'm using the 14 channel mode, um, though it does also feature a 17 channel mode in X lights. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, the benefits you get out of those extra three channels aren't used in X lights, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the 14 is fine. I've set up my first one on DMX uh, channel one on my DMX port on. Uh, my Falcon F48, so that's right there. 
Um, and then I've set up the model. So I'm not going to go in depth in this video over this, but what you basically do is you bring in all the attributes of your light into this model. And like I mentioned with the Dominar beam, I've done that for you and I provide it to you when you buy the light. Um, that's going to save you a lot of time. Okay, this is a 3D model. You can use it in a 3D view of X lights. And I've created um, a preview just with my moving heads for the purpose of this tutorial. Okay. Um, the other things you want to do when setting up a moving head is you want to go in and you want to set up the strand and node names here. And what those are, are the DMX channels. So you pull up your DMX chart. I've got mine here from the Domain RB manual. Um, again, I do this for you. Um, and you list out the names of all the channels so that they're identified in the DMX effect. Okay. Then um, I also like to set up the sub models. Now with DMX control, of course, there are different ways of doing this. Everybody's got their own system. I'm just sharing you uh, briefly my system here. So I have sub models basically that are just each single node and the name of what it controls for everything that I want to control within the light. Okay. Uh, and, and then that's all that those sub models are, but having a sub model allows me to then go ahead and build groups up here. Okay. And in my groups, what I do is I have a group for all the color wheels, for all the gobos, for the intensity, the pan, the prism, uh, the tilt, everything I'm gonna use in my show, I've built a group for, okay? And so you get those in there, you get these guys going, and then the first thing I want you to do when you first model a moving light, whether it's the Dominar and you're using the pre-built model, which you know matches up, or you're using another beam light, uh, just go to the sequencer and start up a new sequence. I'm actually gonna start from scratch, I had one up. I've got my DMX output on. I'm just going to make an animation here just for sake of example. And there's a couple important things here. Okay. The first thing is um, that you can have different views in X lights. And if you're not familiar with these, um, it basically allows you to order things in different ways within the sequencer here in X lights. The reason why that's important is that X lights has what I consider an upside down priority where, um, if you have something like, um, these individual lights. Okay. And right now the moving head intensity is at the very top. Okay. That actually makes it the lowest priority for output. So to do an example here, I'm just going to bring down the DMX effect on moving head one. And I've got some tilt in it there. That's great. Some tilt intensity dimmers at zero. I haven't touched it, but that actually puts the intensity at zero. And so now if I go in here and I add in an on effect on the intensity channel, I get a whole bunch of nothing when I play that back, no intensity coming out of that light. Okay. Um, whereas if I go to this other view and I play it, okay, now I should have output. Double check why I don't have output on that guy. Okay, for whatever reason, the group wasn't working right, but if I bring it down to the individual layer, um, then I've got output on that light. I'm actually gonna turn it down because it's real bright um, and the fan's gonna kick in in a minute. But so now I've got light out of the Dominar there. You can see here, as I move it up and down, we've got the light changing, woohoo. Um, and so the point of that quick exercise is that you want to create a view, which is just done by right click, edit, display elements, add view, rearrange the models here. And the, what I like to do basically is put my um, individual fixtures that I'm going to put the DMX effect. I like to put those on first. Then I like to go and do the individual attributes that way. Um, I use my DMX effect for kind of broad strokes of the paintbrush, right? For, you know, things that are just on for a long time. And then I go below and I use like the on effects here to turn on just the intensity. I can use the on effect here um, to set a gobo level. And so what I would do there is I would look at the light. I would find exactly the gobo that I'm looking for. Sure, that'll work. It's scrolling through them. Um, I could look at my sheet here and I could say, okay, four to seven is my gobo one. So I'll just make this five. Boom, I've got a gobo in it. 
um, done. If I wanted to do color, I could just go ahead and find exactly that light. Go in here on color. Bring in exactly that color. Boom, now it's green. Okay, now I can just bring up the intensity a little bit. Um, and so when I'm working with moving lights, with DMX moving lights here, I don't know if you can see it's green, it's green as can be. When I'm working with DMX moving lights, uh, I'm gonna use a couple different effects here. Yeah, we can see the green going on. Ooh, that's green, all right. Um, so there's a couple different effects here that I, I like to use a lot when I'm working with DMX moving lights. Um, the first is the DMX effect, okay? The DMX effect can be valuable and can get things done. There's a couple things I really like about the DMX effect and then a couple things I don't like about it when I'm using it in my show. Uh, what I like about it is you can work with all the channels of the light in one spot, okay? So it's really great for things that are moving, especially, because you can go to something like tilt here, set a value curve, okay? And then if you haven't used these before, there's all these different options of curves. There's even music-based ones, or you can go custom, and then you literally draw your own curve like this. This will just be a little, you know, a little back and forth on the tilt. Whoop, didn't get rid of that last point there. Let's bring it down. And then so it doesn't jump at the end. Oh my God. Bunch of extra points there. Get rid of those. Whoop. Whoop. There we go. So it doesn't jump at the end. We actually want to add an extra point. This isn't going to be perfect, but you can create a value curve like this. Put it on the tilt. And now you see when I use just that effect, I get a nice tilt. If I play all the effects back, it's now on. It's got the go boat. It's got the color. It's got the tilt. I can see it in my preview. Now, the preview is not going to do colors. The preview is not going to do uh, stuff like that. But it gives you some good stuff to work with. Okay. Uh, and so I like to use the DMX effect for things that are moving, right? I can use it for my tilt there. I can go over to my pan here maybe. And I can go and do a ramp up down on that. So now we get that movement on that guy. Boom. So now we're talking. Now we're moving around. We've got some great movement out of this guy. Okay. And so the DMX effect are things I like to use that are moving. For things that aren't moving a lot or you're just changing them occasionally, um, but you're not doing a lot of movement with them, then I really like the on effect for those because you just place it on the row that the light's on and you're good to go. Um, like just as an example, I could go here and create a much shorter on effect and create a chasing between two lights. As I move it around, of course, it kind of jumps in X lights because I've got output on. You don't have to have the light in the room with you, um, but if you don't know exactly what the colors are or you don't want to have the manual out in front of you or you just want to see it, then that can be a really great option. And so now I've got a really nice chasing of the lights that goes on across all of these. Works well. Um, and that's the basics here. So you basically can go ahead and with moving lights, um, it's maybe not as difficult as it may seem. Um, really, if you're brand new to moving lights and you're just getting started, the thing that I would send home to you, and the reason why I don't want to make this an hour long video like a lot of the other ones out there, they're fine, um, but I want to, I want you to see how simple this really can be. When using the DMX lights, um, I really do like to just start with that DMX effect, okay? You know, copy it to your different lights, offset it, whatever you want to do. So I start with the DMX effect, then I like to go ahead and move and override basically stack on top of the DMX effect other effects. Stacking colors, gobos, intensity, until I really get the results that I want. And with moving heads, um, a lot of this, a lot of the things you want to do is build that DMX effect 
and then you know set them up get it looking really nice and um and then save that and copy that between different portions of your song you know use the value curves on the tilt etc to create those sweeps where it tilts down where it comes in and then go ahead and and hold on to that for later right and then go ahead and do things like um going to your effects presets and then what i like to do it popped up in the other window here is go in here and create a new effect preset and build that off of the what you just built here in xlights and so then you have a library over time that you build up of different movements and it really is as simple then as going okay I'm gonna get rid of this I'm gonna go to my effects presets I've got a pan tilt yellow ballyhoo movement yep and that doesn't have intensity it's just pan tilt and yellow and then I can bring in my intensity and see what I've got going there okay and so there can be a lot of good options there. There can be a lot that you can do just with saving and uh, really building up that library of effects. Again, if you're brand new to this, um, do check out, if you're interested in moving heads, our Dominar Beam. It is uh, really uh, something that I think is revolutionary just because if you're just getting started and you want to add a DMX moving head, um, yes, there's a cost to it, but ultimately... Um, I want to bring the most value I can possible. So check out the Dominar Beam. Um, it's available right now on our pre-sale, but that pre-sale is ending July 31st. So I want to make sure you get in uh, if you are looking to purchase, if you are, uh, you get that pre-sale rate before we close for August 1st. We'll make our order. We'll get them delivered to you about eight weeks later. Um, and, and we'll offer you not only the light itself, but also the model, the effects presets, the tutorials, so that you're able to get started and create an awesome show with some DMX moving hits. Um, until then, I'm David. Thank you guys for watching. Check out all the links we've talked about below. And if you want to learn more, of course, check out LearnChristmasLighting.com and our academy. Have a great day. See ya.